Hello, uh, my name is Arsha. So today I got an interview call from NVIDIA. Uh, I was shortlisted for a role as a circuit design intern for the spring 2024. So they shoot me up with some of the basic questions and I try to extract the knowledge from the basics and they ask so many follow-up questions. Firstly, uh, Firstly, they asked to introduce about myself. So that's a pretty simple task. So I did some, uh, I did my introduction, uh, told me about my coursework and what are, what are my interests. I did some certifications, I told them about that. Afterwards, he told to explain some of my projects in my resume. So told my projects. So he asked basically, uh, he asked about the projects from VLSI design course work I did in my masters. So I pretty much told, which is in my resume. Nextly, uh, uh, he kept me a Microsoft whiteboard link. I opened that and he asked me to plot IDS versus PDS, uh, which is a starting point to my technical interview. So uh, I have drawn the graph and he asked some of the follow up questions. For a fixed VGS, uh, he told me to comment about the IDS curves and uh, he asked if we increase VGS by delta or if we decrease VGS by delta. Uh, what's the distance between uh, ISAT for that particular VGS? Uh, pretty much answered that question. Then he went to device level and asked me. Uh, how does the device behave when it is in linear region? And how does the device uh, behave when it is in a uh, SAT region? So I pretty much explained about how devices work, saturation region, how the device and NMOS device works in linear and saturation region, how the inversion layer forms, etc. And in the saturation region, there will be pinch off. So he asked me about the details about pinch off. Why does that happen? How does the uh, uh, channel looks? So what's the reason for pinch off channel and modulation, etc. Then uh, he pretty much moved on to the next question. So he asked me, he gave me this circuit. So an NMO circuit with gate voltage of five volts. And one node voltage, he was given five volts. Uh, he asked the voltage Vx. He want me to comment about the Vx. So I pretty much told what is Vx and he said if we try to decrease this 5 volts to 0 volts, what happened to this Vx and uh, that's a pretty basic question and he told me to find different parameters such as VGS, VDS, etc. And he gave some threshold voltage and uh, told me to comment about different regions this transistor and most transistor may operate. After that, after that, uh, he gave me a circuit, uh, a inverter chain, like this. And let's assume this is an inverter chain, which is driving the inverter. And he had given the capacitance of this inverter CG to be 100. And this CG is as one. So he want me to size the inverters such that the propagation delay of the circuit is minimum. So this is a thing he asked and he also gave me an inverter circuit. One PMOS and one NMOS, it's DDD, ground. And he asked me a couple of graphs. So he want me to plot graphs between delay, propagation delay versus the load of an inverter. He also asked me about propagation delay and fan out plot for an inverter. Uh, I pretty much uh, drawn those diagrams. I knew those, so that's why uh, I did the graphs. After that, uh, he gave me a wire and he asked a couple of questions. So he gave me a wire, uh, which is one micrometer length, which has a delay of one nanosecond from point A to point B. He gave me another wire, uh, which is two micrometers in length. And he asked to comment about the delay from point A to point B. And he gave me a couple of modifications such as 
the distance uh, if there are two wires like this so he asked me to comment about the different parameters uh, he want me to uh, comment about the capacitance uh, between these two wires and he want me to tell the case where the capacitance is maximum and the capacitance is minimum and uh, pretty much that's it and for the above question he asked me a follow-up question uh, how does the resistance vary if I increase the length of the wire and and he want to uh, know about overall propagation delay uh, the RC effects of this wire which is bigger in size uh, you want me to comment whether RC delay increases or decreases and after that uh, he, uh, he moved on to static timing analysis uh, he had given a flip flop a D flip flop like this uh, connected to clock there is an input D let's say there is an output out and he given various parameters like clock to Q delay as 1 nanoseconds T setup as 1 nanosecond and T hold as 2 nanoseconds he want to comment on the he want me to comment on the F max of the above circuit and he asks a couple of follow-up questions so Oh, do T hold depends on clock frequency? How do I remove my hold violations if there are any in the circuit? How do I remove my set of violations? Uh, yes, the equations for hold and setup. And he also asked, do whole equation has clock to Q delay in it? If not, why? So for every question, I gave some answer. There will be definitely a follow-up question. That's why. That's for sure. So he's going to shoot you why. If you say any answer, you should have some logic reason, logical reason behind it. So this is the... Uh, whole set of violations question follow-up questions and my last question was about a latch timing uh, he want me to draw a latch and he want to know how setup violations and old violations Are present what's the origin of those things why are there in the circuit so basically I need to draw a latch I need to say convince him why there is setup violation in the circuit why there is whole violation in the circuit and uh, after drawing the diagram uh, he gave me some numbers if we, if I use inverters in the circuit let's say the inverter delay is one nanosecond and and switching time of a transmission gate T switching time is 0.5 nanoseconds then he want me to comment on the overall T setup T hold of a latch and he also delayed the clock for the transmission gate and asked me to evaluate how setup and how setup and hold time Varies. Uh, basically, these are the set of my questions. I think it's a straightforward interview, but uh, you need a good base, good foundation to answer those questions. And definitely, if you say something, there is gonna be some follow-up question on that. And if you say something for that, there is always a question why. So, before saying anything, just remember, uh, try to think of some reason and just present that reason to him. Uh, uh, pretty much after that he said if you have any further questions please ask me then that's it my interview got in, uh, ended uh, it's a good experience uh, it's my first uh, first interview in my masters for the internship i think uh, i got lot of insights how the interview goes 
and i think i did decent enough uh by thinking uh, by thinking this as my first interview i think de- decent enough it's gone for around 1 hour 20 minutes i know the questions are basic but he going to ask you a lot of follow up questions that's why it took longer than required time uh oh, that's it just prepare the basics uh, just be strong with your foundation then uh you will somehow uh get to the final answer or somehow uh can answer the follow up questions he has and somehow derive the equations get the equations get the uh get the relationship between various parameters which is very important so uh, in this line question which one in this eighth question he just want me to comment on di- different parameters do capacitance uh, increase exponentially when wires come close by uh or if wire length is increased how the resistance varies how the propagation delay varies so these are the basic things uh he checked on me mm, it went decent uh yep that's it uh, i forgot to mention some of the questions and he also wanted me to comment about a uh, new n by new p ratio and what this is called uh, given a inverter how do you size n mos and p mos and he asked me why do we size size n mos and p mos and if there are a lot of uh, 0 to 1 switching in a circuit can we do anything to decrease the delay uh, these are the things i asked uh, me about sizing and uh, about this whole set of violation question uh, he also asked me to hold uh, hold violation depends on clock frequency uh, if we speed or slow down the circuit does that affect hold violations and he pretty much asked the explanation if no how is uh, why is that happening in that circuit uh this sizing thing okay thing else he asked me 